Hi everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolor.co.uk and thank you very much for joining me. This is what I've been making today, this cute little uh, petal topped box. Lovely for giving a small gift for Easter or uh, for Mother's Day or just because. So stay with me, I'll show you how I made it. These are the things that I'm using today. Uh, for my box I've got a piece of bundle of love cardstock and I've cut it to ten and a half inches by five. Uh, for stamping on I've got a piece of very vanilla and I've got some blushing bride and some gold foil. The stamps I'm using are from A Good Day and I'm using soft suede ink and I've got three punches. I've got a one and three eighths of an inch circle, a one and a half inch circle and a one and three eighths of an inch scalloped circle. I'm going to do my scoring on the um, on the non-foiled side of the card and I'm going to score it on the long edge at 2 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches and 8 inches and finally at 10 inches. I'm going to turn to my short edge and I'm just going to check my measurements here and I'm going to score it at one and three eighths of an inch, that's a quarter, that's three eighths. And again at uh, three and three eighths. I've burnished all my folds so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to be working on the inside of the box. Um, one, so that you can see it better because the foil does flare. Uh, and two, because I'm going to be marking this up in just a moment. Now, if I fold my card, as you can see, I've got one piece here that is longer than the other. That piece covers more of them, that panel than that piece does. So the short piece is going to be the, the bottom of my box. And I'm going to cut away this panel here. I'm going to snip into this panel here and just mark those edges and I'm just going to just cut up cut a little wedge out of each of those pieces. Now if you've got the uh, gift bag punch board you could absolutely do these edges with the gift bag punch board and that would give you a lovely finish on them but uh, I don't have mine handy with me to put. Now I'm going to mark the centre of each of these panels so they're each two inches wide so I'm going to mark one inch at three inches at five inches Move that along and at seven inches and at nine inches. There we go. Okay. And now I've got my protractor. Any kind of uh, curved anything with a curved edge will do and I'm going to show you this in pencil but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go in and do that with my stylus in just a moment so I'm going to mark a curve so I'm starting where that first fold line is and I'm drawing up to that set point okay and then I'm going to repeat that all the way along this top panel. Now the way I find it easiest to work is to do uh, go one way first and then come back and do the others. So uh, I'm just going to crack on with this. Let's see in a little bit. Okay, 
So I know it's not very easy to see, but all my curves are in place, and now I'm just going to, uh, to train them. So I like to do them first on the wrong side and I'm going to turn them over and do them onto the right side. So now I'm working on the right side of my box. I've got some tear and tape on these end panels. I'm just going to pinch my petal points to make sure they're going in the direction that I want them to. And by starting on the wrong side and working on that wrong side first, it um, creates a, uh, a gen what they call a gender neutral fold. It's, uh, it could be a valley fold or a mountain fold. It doesn't really matter. Now, because this is a five point pointed box, um, it won't store flat. If you made a four petaled or a six petaled box, uh, it would. Just saying. But this is a five pointed star, so once you reach this point, the box is going to be in its uh, in its three D format. Okay, so to close up the box, I'm going to push one flap in, bring that one over, come over, come over, and finally, and to hold the base in place, I've uh, punched a one and a half inch circle of very vanilla, and I've put a couple of pieces of tear and tape onto the back of it. And the backing of my tape it doesn't want to come off, but we were firm. So let's get that to shape we want it and press that down with my bone folder. I've mounted my sentiment onto a clear block. I've got my soft suede ink and my very vanilla card and I'm just inking up my stamp with taking the stamp to the pad not the pad to the stamp works better for me and I'm just going to press that down and count one two three four five for the ink to transfer and now I'm going to bring in the one and three eighths of an inch scalloped circle punch I'm just going to center my image in the punch and I'm kind of half pressing down on the punch so that it sort of holds it but it, it doesn't go all the way and when I'm happy with my positioning I just finish that all the way uh, with my one and three eighths of an inch plain circle and punch out a piece of gold foil and with the one and a half inch circle punch I've got a piece of brushing bride. So now I'm going to layer these pieces up. Now I have some fast fuse here. Snail will do if you're out of fast fuse because uh, it's been discontinued. We can't get it anymore. And we don't know yet what, if anything, is going to come in to replace it. So. Uh, you know now because these two punches are the same size circle when you put the one on top of the other you just get a hint 
of the of the gold foil coming out underneath which I think is very pretty and that is going to layer on top of that but I'm going to use some dimensionals for that and there it is I've got a one-eighth of an inch circle punch and I'm going to work my way around the top of the box punching holes in each flap and the way that I've done it I started off by punching one hole line that one up to punch the second hole and now if I fold that in half I can see where I'm going to go and I can punch that hole and now I can fold that over and punch that hole and I'm going to work my way all the way around the top of the box punching out holes so uh, yeah see you soon I've got some one eighth of an inch gold ribbon which I'm threading through each of those holes I just made and to help me I've cut the end of my ribbon onto a very sharp angle. Now it will fray so I'm probably going to need to keep doing that as I go along. Um, so uh, bear with me because uh, this is probably going to take some time. So with my ribbon uh, threaded through, so the next thing I would do would be to put my gift into my box. But then I can just put on my ribbon strands here and just tie them off. trim the ends a little bit but I don't want to do too much because I do want to have something to hold on to when I open my box okay I don't want to collapse the top of this box I like this this dome shape um, so I don't really want to put any pressure on it uh, so I'm going to be very very careful uh, a very carefully applied mini dimensionals to each of those uh, points where they, they meet. Uh, I've got a mini dimensional on the back of my sentiment and I've also put some uh, some mini sequins, gold mini sequins on there with a little glue dot. So I'm going to very carefully, holding this while I do it, shake that out of there, take the back off my mini dimensionals. Take the whole mini dimensional off, why not? Why don't you? And put it back on again. Yeah, this stuff happens. Stay. Just holding on. Just supporting it with my hands as I take the back off. Just pinching that top. And Okay, I've lost one, but never mind. Take that off my centerpiece, and I'm going to orient this the way I want it. Curve that with my fingers. And just very, very carefully pop that into place while I'm holding up that petal top. So there it is, there is my finished petal top box. Now, um, putting the emblem on the top, I will admit, was trickier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so if you didn't want to do that, then, you know, just don't bother. Just put your 
panel on to one of the um, so there it is there is my little finished uh, petal top box uh, now uh, I will tell you the truth putting the uh, the emblem on the top was uh, was trickier than I thought it was going to be. It was very, very easy to apply too much pressure and to collapse the whole thing. And I particularly wanted that little dome top to my box. So if I was making this again, um, I would probably stamp my sentiment and I would put it onto one of these these side panels and I would just leave that with the bow at the top and it would be just as pretty that way. But thank you for staying with me up till now. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Would love it if you came back and saw me again soon. But for now, bye-bye.